of the Pacific. We're broadcasting live from Long Beach, California. It's about 45 minutes outside of Los Angeles. And we're so excited to have you uh, join us today. We're gonna be looking at the inside of a fish. Before we get started, I wanted to have you look at a live view of Blue Cavern. Now, because I live in California, this happens to be my ocean backyard. It's a kelp forest habitat. You can see though, that there's lots of animals that live here. So take a look really quickly at what you notice about some of our fish. I'll step aside. So in this view, you can see that there are some fish that are moving and some fish that aren't. Like at the very, very bottom, we have a gorgeous view of our leopard shark here. And then we have some fish that are moving a whole lot way up there. Those are actually sardines. It's a big school of sardines. We also happen to have inside of this exhibit, a school, a smaller school of mackerel. Now those sardines, I think there's hundreds of them that are schooling together. Um, they're all swimming together, but we also do happen to have a mackerel, a group of mackerels that live in there. And the mackerel is the fish that we're gonna be taking a closer look at today. I do wanna let all of our viewers out there know a few things about what we're gonna do today. So first of all, if you have any questions, feel free to text us and we will take your questions live here on air. Uh, questions can be texted to 562-286-1838. Once again, 562-286-1838. Standard data rates do apply. And if you don't have a phone, ask your parents or whatever grown up is with you right now to help you text that in and we will take your questions. Once again, 562-286-1838. If by chance you're watching this recorded on YouTube, then you can always email us and we are happy to email you right back. The email will be live, L-I-V-E, at lbaop.org. Live at Long Beach Aquarium of Pacific, lbaop.org. All right? Wonderful. So today we're gonna to be having a look at a mackerel. Now the mackerel that we're looking at today actually comes uh, not from our collection, but is actually a part of the diet that we would use for a seal or a sea lion or other uh, fish like shark and, and some of our bigger animals that eat the oily, oily fish that is a mackerel. Maybe you've tried mackerel before too because it's a fish that a lot of people will eat. And uh, we'll take a closer look at it right now. So I'm here in the studio, like I said, uh, in Long Beach with my friend Amanda. She's gonna make it possible for us to look closer at a very special camera we've got right over here in the studio where I can show you a, a mackerel that we've uh, thawed out. It was frozen and we thawed it out just so that you could see it. Um, I do want to also let you know that during this session, we will be cutting open this fish. So it'll be a lot like if you've ever prepped any food in the kitchen, any meat in the kitchen, it might have a little bit of blood. So for those of you that are a little bit queasy about things like that, I just wanted to give you a warning. We're gonna go ahead and start with the external anatomy first though. So that's all the outside parts. So follow me over to this camera. So I have a very special camera. It's zoomed in right here. And I have a mackerel. So I'm gonna back it out just so we can see the mackerel a little bit more. Now this mackerel happens to be um, a little bit longer than like sort of one and a half hands on me, but mackerel can be very uh, much bigger than this. They can be uh, something like a foot uh, or a foot and a half long, just depending. Um, we happen to have these on exhibit here at the aquarium, but this is a pretty common fish off of our coast here in California and off of many other coasts. Um, it is a fish that is eaten. Uh, so a lot, there's a big mackerel industry that's out there. So let's take a look first at the external anatomy. So what we notice about the outside. Now I'm gonna stand over here. So it's still over on my special camera, but I'm able to point out things here in front of you. So actually I'm gonna change the lighting just a little bit to see if we can see the color a little bit better. It's a little bit shiny. Okay, let's see, maybe like this. You can see right there. All right, so here is our fish. Now, the first thing that strikes me is that this fish is pretty fish shaped, right? So it has this long, almost football shape that like it's like a football that has been like stretched out 
and sort of squashed up a little bit. That is called a fusiform body shape. You'll notice that a lot of things that move through the water really well and a lot or that move through air really well are shaped like fusiform body shapes. Um, I think about like the Goodyear blimp, right, is, is something that is fusiform in shape. Footballs are fusiform shape. Sharks are fusiform shape. So there's lots of things that move through both air and water that are fusiform shape. And that's because this shape is really hydrodynamic, which means it's really good at cutting through the water. Uh, so this is probably a pretty decent swimmer. Turns out you can tell a lot about a fish just by looking at a couple things on the outside. So this fish happens to be fusiform in shape because we can see it has the tapered ends and sort of is like a football that's been squashed. Now, what else do you notice about this fish? One thing I want to uh, point out here is you might notice that the very top of it has a couple of fins on it. We can see these are called dorsal fins. And if you look carefully, the dorsal fins actually have these beautiful spines in them because a mackerel is a ray-finned fish. And it actually has two sets of dorsal fins on the top right there. And they both have those ray fins on them. So it has the big spines and in between the spines there's webbing. That helps, uh, all those fins help the fish to swim and be stable in the water. It also has a couple of other fins. We can see right here on this one, it has two pectoral fins. So the pectoral fins, that one's sticky. The two pectoral fins also help it to sort of steer from side to side. Okay, so it's got two pectoral fins. We also see that it has a, a, a tail, a caudal fin. This, it has a little piece sort of missing, but it would be sort of Y-shaped. This means it's a pretty decent swimmer. Okay, and then uh, of course it has two pelvic fins on the bottom, we can see right here. It has those same ray fins, so for strength, and yet it has those um, sort of webbing parts in between for flexibility. And it's got an anal fin back here next to its anus. Um, this also happens to have uh, little finlets right here, and that's another thing that helps to stabilize them because they're burst swimmers. So they'll move their tail back and forth and this actually helps to stabilize them. So um, really great external features there that are all the fins on our fish. fish uh, different fish have also different types of fins. So the next time you're able to see in pictures or you're here at the aquarium or at your local aquarium and you see different fish, check out their fins. Are their fins made for swimming? Are there fins made for hanging out uh, on the bottom? We even have some fish who have fins that act like suction cups. The spiny lump sucker is one of my favorite fish. Uh, it looks like a little ball almost with a teeny little suction cup on the bottom. The suction cup is actually really modified fins. So different, uh, uh, oh, great example. This is a frog fish. It's another example of a fish with really, really different fins. Instead of the ray fins, uh, it has these modified fins that help it to sort of sit down on the ground like a frog. And so you can see that, um, in fact, sometimes they even sort of lumber a little bit on the ground using uh, very specialized fins. So it turns out you can tell a lot about a fish just by looking at its fins. You can also tell a lot about a fish by the, the other parts of the external or outside anatomy. So I'm going to go back over to my special camera again, and maybe you noticed it when I turned the fish earlier, but what do you notice about the top versus, oh, look at that beautiful color right there, versus the bottom? Once again, I'm going to show you. Here's the top of our fish, and as I rotate it over, what do you notice about the colors? Yeah, there's two different colors here. So there's sort of a darker color with a, it's like blue and sort of gray, uh, gray on the top. And then it has this really sleek looking silver, almost like a, a coin on the bottom. This is called counter shading. So this animal has dark on the top and light on the bottom. And it turns out there's actually a lot of animals out there that are dark on the top and light on the bottom. So maybe, Amanda, if you can switch over and we can look at maybe some sharks or a picture or a video of one or any sort of animal that's dark on the top and light on the bottom. 
that's a really special adaptation. Uh, here's a great animal that's dark on the top and light on the bottom. So you can imagine if you were uh, a, predator, or a, a predator or prey and you were around this area with the puffin, if you were looking down at the puffin, you would only see black and it's really hard to see anything around it. If you were looking up at the puffin from below, you would see only its white belly. So that's why, that's how countershading works is that if they're dark on the top and light on the bottom, it makes them harder to be seen and, um, and yeah, just like this. So you can see it's dark on the top and light on the bottom. It makes it harder for them to be seen by either predators or by prey. Um, just depending. And so it's a great adaptation. A lot of different animals have this kind of adaptation. Sharks, fish, penguins, puffins, lots of different things are countershaded for this reason. So our mackerel over here has this beautiful countershading. It also happens to have this sort of wavy pattern on the top and this uh, really glossy silver pattern on the bottom. Okay, so so far that's a that's sort of a an overview of the big features. Um, we can also, I want to dig in a little bit farther and look at some of the smaller features though. And it's a little bit harder to see this. We're going to look at the face last, but um, along the side here, there's actually, if you look in the right light, there's a little bit of a line. I'm going to see, oh, there, I can see it now. You guys can see this line that travels all the way down the side. Now I'm going to try and zoom in and see if we can see it even closer. Um, I'll try and turn it, oh, oh, just a little bit. You can see that it almost looks like it has this, um, it almost looks like a, like a groove, sort of. So uh, if you look even closer, and it's a little bit hard to see, but they're actually, it's, it's a line of little dots all the way down the side here. Um, and that is called the lateral line. So the lateral line right here allows the fish it's uh, a series of pits all the way down. It's like little holes. The little holes have a little dead end at the bottom and it has a little goo, a little bit of slime at the bottom and they can detect uh, vibration. It, this is actually sort of like an extension of its sense of touch. And that's one of the reasons how they're able to school together is that they're able to feel their neighbors all around them using a lateral line system. A lot of fish have this and that's how they're able to move around. And when you see them schooling, they actually swim pretty close together. Um, just like right here are sardines inside the blue cavern. They have lateral lines. They can feel all the fish around them moving. And in that way, um, it's a great adaptation when, to school together because they are able to stick together and there's safety in numbers. Uh, so it's really, really a, a lovely thing that you might not have known about fish, that they're able to detect fish around them. So let's go back to our, our camera here on the side. So we've gotten a look at the shape. We've looked at some of the fins, the coloration, the lateral line. Let's take a closer look at the face here. I'm going to see if I can zoom in and also change the lighting just a little bit, just so that you can see the, the face a little bit better. How's that? Okay, so we have a great question coming in. Uh, why is this eye so big? Well, um, like I said, a lot of these features uh, about a fish tell you about their, the way that they live. And so typically a fish um, with big eyes uses the big eye. Um, and so that means that there is vision that's important to them, whether that is um, to look for hunters or, you know, look for predators or to catch their prey. Um, so that's, it's just got a really pronounced eye. We'll take a closer look at the eye later on. Uh, you'll also see that they have, um, it's a little bit hard to see right here, but they have a little nostril. I'm trying to point to it. Um, let me see if I can zoom in even more. Yep, you can sort of see it. Let me change the lighting just a little bit. You can sort of see it here. It's a little overexposed, uh, but they have a little nostril right here. And that uh, is, it's actually not a nostril quite like ours. Our nostrils connect to our throat and mouth. Um, their nostril is a sort of a little uh, pit or a bag, uh, like a bag almost, like it's just a dead end. And that's actually how they smell. It just introduces water into them. The other really interesting thing that I think about 
with fish is they've got really neat jaws. So if you look at the jaw here, it opens up. It's almost like, did you see that? It's almost like origami. Let me see if I can darken it just a little bit. You can see it sort of unfolds on itself there. And it has like this side wall on the, the jaw there. It all unfolds as the, as the fish opens its mouth. That is because fish uh, have a, these bony fish have a protrusible jaw and different fish have different jaw structures. So this is a pretty standard jaw structure. It unfolds and it allows them to suck their food in. Um, but some other fish like wrasses um, actually have really complicated origami in this. Uh, it unfolds and is, is really beautiful. Uh, and so that is, it's just different adaptations for different types of food. Um, still other fish have really modified mouth parts, like the seahorse has a really, really different looking mouth um, because it is, it's almost like a tube with a straw, um, straw-like mouth. So they have this beautiful protrusible jaw here. The other thing I wanna see if I can show you is um, if you look in, you can see that big bright tongue let me see if I can, it's hard because that's off the plane of the plate. But let me zoom out a little bit and see and change the lighting for you. Yeah. How about like this? Let's see if we can look in there. You can actually see, I'm going to change the lighting for you. Oops, make it maybe a little brighter. It's a little bit hard to see, but it actually has a triangular shaped tongue right there. So um, really, really cool mouth, um, right? And you can see everything in there. So it's got, that's like their tongue um, and everything folds up. So really beautiful animal. Now, the next thing I wanna do is we're gonna take a closer look at how this animal lives. And they of course uh, live underwater and because of that, they also breathe underwater. Now, all fish, what they do is they bring water in through their mouth. So the water goes in through their mouth and it actually passes over their gills. Their gills happen to be hidden behind this door. This door is called an operculum. It's a big flap. I wanna cut off this operculum just so you can see it a little bit better, but this is how it looks on the bottom. So they bring water in through the mouth and they pass it over the gills. And you can sort of see right in here, a couple of the gills there. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this door off, this operculum off, so you can have a better look at what the gills look like on the inside. I'm cutting with just a normal pair of dissection scissors. And so the door can come off, this is the operculum. And on the inside, you can see there's gills in there. So here's a whole set of gills, and there's actually several of them. So they uh, lay down on each other, almost like the pages of a book, if you can see in there. Let's see, I'll make it a teeny bit darker. Um, so you can see that they have uh, several different uh, gills sitting right on top of each other. These feather-like parts of the gills are what touches the water and is able to get oxygen, to collect oxygen because um, it, it grabs the oxygen out of the water. Um, okay, so we have, we have here these gills right here, really different than us. Of course, we have lungs on the inside of our body. Um, and when we breathe in, we breathe in through our mouth and nose, it goes into our lungs and then we breathe back out through our mouth. These uh, animals breathe one way. So they breathe water in and it goes out the gills. I'm gonna go ahead and cut one gill out so you can take a closer look at it because the gills, it turns out, are really, really beautiful um, just to see there. So I'm gonna snip it on one side, uh, on each side rather, and it's gonna come out and it's gonna look like the letter C. So you can see it right here. This is one gill. It's got these soft feather-like side. And then on the inside, it's got uh, actually gill rakers these gill rakers are stick into the throat of the animal. It, it serves a lot of different functions depending on the type of fish, because so many different fish have gill rakers. Um, and in some fish that eat plankton, 
um, the gill rakers help collect that. So it's a little bit harder on this side and it's real soft on this side. Let me see if I can get a little closer. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Okay, there we go. So this is a gill. And if we remember, there's many different um, layers of the gills inside of this fish. And that is how they breathe. The water passes over the gills and the gills remove the oxygen from the water. So let's have a look really quickly at a cartoon of this. As I've been mentioning, this water goes in through their mouth and over their gills, and then it takes all the oxygen out. And that's uh, right here. We can see the soft part of our gill filaments. The long part that's more like almost um, finger-like in a way are the gill rakers. That helps assist the animal um, for its eating, actually. So it takes advantage of the fact that water is pouring in. And so for animal plankton, um, it grabs a plankton. For yet other animals, um, it just keeps the food moving in one direction, um, going in the throat. So uh, really, really interesting adaptation that's so, so different than the Okay, so that is uh, a little look at the gills. We're going to actually come back to look at the eye a, a little bit later if we've got time. Uh, but what I want to do is actually look at the inside of this animal. And, and maybe look at it in a different way. Now, a lot of times when people eat mackerel, they'll just eat them kind of whole and then they'll eat the filet off the side or um, you might eat part of the cheek there. Um, we're gonna sort of do it the same way here. And I'm going to cut in and look at just the side of this animal. Actually, I'm gonna cut in on the side we've already cut open. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a normal pair of scissors here and I'm going to cut down the middle of the fish right here. This is called, this is their anal vent. So this is where all their waste products come out. I'm just gonna cut all the way down the middle using the scissors. And I'm gonna lay it down. From here, I'm actually gonna cut all the way up. Um, I'm gonna cut just past the gill raker here. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna cut down here. I will be cutting through ribs, so I'll show you what it looks like as I cut through the ribs here. Okay, so this is essentially a filet like you would buy at the market, um, just cut with scissors instead of a nice sharp knife. You can see that I've cut through bones here. So those are the rib bones that would come down from the spine up top. So um, just like we have ribs, the fish have ribs as well. Um, and we can see even in just the part that I've cut, there's a big thick layer of muscle or tissue. That's what we would normally be eating, right? But there's also all the insides of this fish. So we're gonna take a closer look at the insides. Now, what's really cool about fish is uh, similar to us, they're, all their respiratory stuff, the stuff that helps them to breathe, all the organs that are associated with that are, are located right by each other. So here are the gills. Remember, it takes oxygen out. And then it's uh, similar to us, it's gills and our, their heart are right next to each other. So I'm gonna try and brighten it up and I wanna show you the heart of this animal. It's right here. So it is triangular. They happen to have a four chambered heart, just like us. It's located right between the gills. So there's a set of gills on this side. There's actually a set of gills on this side. So similar to how you and I have a heart with uh, lungs on either side, we happen, to have, um, we happen to have the heart right in the middle there of the gills. I love uh, seeing this because it's actually similar to our heart pointy on one end there as well. Uh, if you were able to feel it too, you could actually feel it's a pretty tough little muscle there. Very dark. Um, and yeah, and so they've got a heart right there. Now this is really beautiful too. Um, this happens to be the guts of the, the, the digestive parts um, of the fish are right behind here. So of course, when the fish eats, it eats uh, through its mouth 
and it swallows its food and then the food goes into an esophagus which is actually kind of hidden back here but then we can see it goes into its stomach now this is really beautiful they actually have a an organ that's a little bit different than ours they have to increase the amount of space that they have to uh, do digestion they actually have these pyloric cica so they look like um, it looks fluffy almost finger like here and this is the stomach of our fish right here this one is pretty empty actually i don't see a whole lot inside of this stomach um, and there's it should be a small liver on top that this stomach is pretty empty um, i can also tell you this one is a female because these are her ovaries right here let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see what i'm pointing to yeah so right here this tissue right here is one of her two ovaries so this thing right here is an ovary i actually have pre-cut another fish that i want to show you and just by chance it happens to be a male with a full stomach so it actually is a little bit different than the one we've got here so uh, this one has the pyloric cica also so we can see them right next to each other it's a little bit hard to see um, let me zoom in just a little bit okay so here's the pyloric cica these are the testes so this is how i know it's a male and this one's stomach is right here yeah sure so i just got a request um, from someone to see if they can see the heart better i'm happy to cut that out for you uh, so we can see it here um, and then we, we can look it looks like actually this one doesn't have quite as full a stomach as i was hoping um, but it does have a little bit more than this one we can see this one also has a, a lot of intestines sitting right there so just like we have um, intestines that help us aid in our digestion they've got intestines as well so i'm going to try and cut the heart out here at the top okay let me see if i can pull this out now there's a lot of um, connective tissue like that's called mesenteries inside that help keep everything in place so I'm, i just need to snip through to cut the um, connective tissue apart here So we are almost out of time, but I want to make sure you guys can see this. Oh, so let me clean my hands off and I'm going to move this to a different part. So this is the heart right here. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can actually see there's, this is the tough bottom of the heart this is the top of the heart um, so this is the uh, atria here and the ventricles on this side and you can see even um, one of the veins that goes into the heart right there it's really really tough and they have to be tough because remember the heart's a really strong muscle and it's got to be able to push blood all over the body so it's a literal pump and that's why um, actually the bottom the ventricles are um, tougher it's because they actually have to do the pushing um, that pushes all the blood out so this is the heart um, let me see actually let me move it to a dish and see if i can show you just a little bit better what that looks like i don't know if that's helpful yeah it, i think it's about the same there so once again um i'm going to try and take a couple of questions now as we wrap up but this is the inside of two of our mackerels we do happen to have a male on the top and a female on the bottom. I got a great question about how big mackerel can get and how much do they eat? Um, they can be almost two feet in length. So um, the ones that I happen to have here are about a foot long, they can be twice as long. The ones that we do have living in our otter exhibit are quite large as well. Um, and, uh, and then we got the request to take the heart out. Um, and they can live, uh, I got a question about how old can they get um, they can live 10 to 15 years. So they can actually live a, a fairly long time. I guess it's a little easier for me to point out here. So here's the male. This is the testes. These are the ovaries. You can actually see the difference in texture too, which I think is really neat. So the testes uh, are smooth tissue 
and the ovaries, you can almost see how the white light reflects off of it. That's because um, it has eggs in it. There are ovaries with eggs, so that's the female right there. So um, I think that's it for our questions today. I want to thank you all for joining me. If you have questions and you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to email us at live at lbaop.org. That's L-I-V-E at lbaop.org. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you have a safe and healthy, happy weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.